Hi, so in Microsoft Excel, now we have the Lambda function available in the production stage. That means we can start creating awesome functions which can make our MS Excel file work like an app. So the function I'm going to teach you today is a debt amortization schedule function. So where what we're going to do is simply type a formula debt amortization schedule, give the interest rate, the number of periods and the loan amount and with one function, we'll see the entire schedule falling in place. If you need to know how to create the schedule, one prerequisite is that you need to know how to build a dynamic array-based debt amortization schedule. I had created a video on this a couple of years back, so I would strongly encourage that you go and watch that. Now let's come and talk about how did we create this schedule. So first, what we're going to do is, we're going to learn how to generate each of these arrays independently. The opening balance array, the interest, the repayments and the closing balance. So in order to create them, I'm going to first create them with separate functions and then we'll combine them all with a lambda function. So how do you create all the opening balances year 1 to year 10? So one way to get that is with the FE function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type equals FE. The rate of interest is 8 percentage. The number of periods. Now, I want the opening balance for all the years from year 1 to 10. And if you're talking about opening balance, the periods are going to be year 0 to 9. So in terms of number of period or the period number, I'm going to not specify a single number. I'm going to generate a sequence of numbers here. So I want 10 numbers in one single column, 10 rows of numbers in one single column, starting at 0. So the sequence function is going to generate a sequence of numbers from 0 to 9. And then I'm going to specify the payment. I've already derived the annuity amount using the PMT function here. So I'll select that. And the last function we're going to give us, last parameter we're going to give us the loan amount. Now select that and close. The FE function gives the answer in negative because it says we have to pay the money. So if you want it in positive, which is what we want. So you could add a minus sign before the FE function. Now I've got the opening balance. Interest amount is simply going to be the opening balance times the interest rate. Repayment is going to be the same repayment number which I have derived using the PMT function but it has to come 10 times. How do I do that? I am again going to use the sequence function. Sequence of 10 rows, 1 column, start at minus 14.9 2.95. And I'm going to put the step value as 0, so don't change the number at all. So that same number is going to come 10 times. And finally, I'll have a closing balance number, which is simply going to be opening balance plus interest minus repayment. But since the repayment number is already negative, let me add it. Enter. We've got the answer. So this is a very dynamic model. So if the number of period changes, you will notice that our answer also automatically changes. So now let's see how do we fix it with lambda. How do we create this using a lambda so that I can call all these four steps with one single formula. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my lambda function. I could use the advanced formula editor. For now I'm just doing it in cell. Not all of you might have invoked the add-in. So lambda, what are the parameters the end user is going to give? The rate, number of period and PV. The names you use here are very important because it's the same name you have to reuse everywhere. So just remember them. Now first I need to get a PMT function. Now I don't want to store them in a separate cell anywhere. right? I want all of them to be derived using one formula, no extra helper cells. So what can we do? That's where the let function is going to help us. So I'm going to start with the let function, open the bracket. So I'm going to create a name here called let's say PMT. And this name is where I'm going to store the annuity amount. The annuity amount is going to be derived using the PMT function. PMT, rate, number of period and PV. This rate is exactly the rate I have defined here. The name I've used here. There should not be any spelling difference. It has to be perfect. Comma. So once we've got the PMT, then we want the FV. To get the FV, the future value, I'll call it as opening balance. So what we did, we used a future value function. So minus FV rate 
in place of number of periods we didn't use one period we generated a sequence of 10 numbers so i'm going to put sequence of how many numbers i want as many periods that are there with one column starting at zero we have already derived the annuity amount or the pmt so that's the pmt number that's what i'm going to pay and the present value is the p the loan amount so we've got the opening balance interest is simply going to be opening balance times rate comma for the payments the series of payments what we did we use a sequence function sequence of number of periods comma 1 comma whatever was the annuity amount we calculated earlier comma the step value had to be 0 so if you are getting confused as to what we are doing here go back a few seconds in the video or a few minutes in the video and see what we did individually for each of the column that's exactly what i'm doing here now closing balance was supposed to be opening balance plus interest plus payment so let me put that here closing balance is opening balance plus interest plus payment comma so we've got all the four arrays opening balance interest payments and closing balance what we need now is all the four of them to come as one single matrix or one single table how do i get all the four to come together one option is you could use a choose function so what a choose function normally does is when you give a index number so if you give you start with the index number and then you add multiple values so if your index number is 2 you then pick up the second value from the list that you provide later on if the index number is 5 then it's going to pick up the fifth value from the list so what i am going to do here is instead of giving one index number i am going to generate four numbers here using the sequence function and keep in mind i want these four numbers to come in columns or the four values to come in four different columns so i'm going to put sequence of one row four columns so generate me a sequence number and then i'm going to give the four values i'm going to specify the list here the list is going to be the first item in the list is opening balance the second item in the list is interest third item in the list is payments and the last item in the list is closing balance close the bracket so this choose function is going to be my return value so once i have closed the choose function so this choose function i did not assign it to any of the variable names that means this is the final return value so now let me close the let function and let me close the lambda this will not give me an answer this will give me a calc error now just to check that the function is working fine i'm going to do a function call you do a function call by adding the parameters after the lambda function after closing the lambda function you call the parameters within a bracket so interest rate number of periods and loan amount close it let's see it works seems to be working fine so let me copy the lambda part and i'm going to create go to the name manager i already have the debt amortization schedule created let me call it as debt amort schedule 2 and let me paste it here and click okay if you have the advanced editor i would strongly encourage you use the advanced editor it makes our life much better when you typing such lengthy formula you see here i can type the formula very well so now that we have created let's see if it works fine we have created it so let me delete this entire section here so i'm going to put equals debt amount schedule 2 rate number of periods and loan amount let's close the bracket works fine this is only a small application that we did when you know lambda function when you know financial mathematics better you can even make an app where one function can crunch lots of debt in one go so here i have a bunch of debt with me now all the debt i have here are maturing in 2026 so my table runs up to 2026 let me add another debt with some different interest rate and let's say maturing in 5 years time that goes till 2030 and you notice that my debt schedule automatically spills into 2030 so you can crunch large volumes of data with one small function but of course to be able to do this you also need to have strong knowledge of financial mathematics uh but definitely the options and the potentials we are looking at is 
immense here. All right. Hope you learned something useful today. See you next time with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.